After our time in Jerusalem, we're excited as we descend along the infamous Jericho Road from the mountain top of the Dead Sea, the lowest place on earth, 1,412 feet below sea level. This only has a different feel to it. The mountains of Jordan opposite. This is literally Egypt's road, but we're not going that far. Our destination is the legendary Fortress of Masada, an ancient fortification on top of an isolated rock plateau, the geographical term being a mesa, which is the Spanish for table. It's on the eastern edge of the Judean desert. We're on the cable car on our way to the top past the ruins of Roman camps, the Dead Sea in the distance, the ancient pathway below, and cameras at the ready. Its history is the subject of controversy, but clearly history is all around, and the mystery of its past rather than detracting from the experience, heightens it. What really happened here 2,000 years ago? The actual altitude here is only 144 feet, but that's because the Dead Sea is so low. Nate and Rachel are already enjoying it. So what's the story behind this place? A model of what it used to look like helps our imagination a little. Between 37 and 31 BC, Herod the Great built a palace here and fortified it. At that time, it was a beautiful place with magnificent living rooms and storehouses for food because Herod was always afraid that his many enemies might attack him. Also water systems that collected rainwater. It's estimated the systems could hold 10 million gallons of water. So large were the water systems that Josephus comments, it was as if there had been fountains there. The sumptuous bathhouses are amazing. The walls ornately decorated and one can clearly imagine this place was not just a place for bathing, but the bathhouse became a social gathering place where people would chat, discuss, and plan. It's clearly very elaborate and must have been a spectacular place, considering it's on top of a mountain and in the middle of a desert. These columns supported an elevated wooden floor. After the fall of Jerusalem to the Romans, the Sicarii rebels, literally the Dagomen, fled here, and it became the last bastion of Jewish resistance to Roman rule. A Roman army and entourage of almost 10,000 surrounded the rebels, 
their camps are visible. There were said to be 967 rebels, including many women and children. The Romans finally ended the siege by building a siege ramp on the western side, where the cliffs were not so high. Eight Roman camps surrounded Masada. According to Josephus Flavius, the siege of Masada by troops of the Roman Empire at the end of the First Jewish-Roman War ended in the mass suicide of 960 people, the Sicarii rebels and their families. But was it a suicide? Consider how they did it. The men first killed their wives and children. Then they drew lots and ten men killed all the others. Then the ten men drew lots and one man killed the other nine men and then committed suicide. There is therefore only one person who actually killed himself. But if they all died, how can we know about it? Apparently two old women and five children, on hearing about the plan, hid in a cistern. When the Romans came, they gave themselves up and related the story to them. This account was then told to Josephus in Rome, who wrote it down. There's been controversy about this in recent times, as Josephus is the only source we now have for it, and some claim that he made up the suicide pact. It had happened before in the Galilee, when Josephus was actually there, and survived. It made for a good story. So is it tabloid fodder or truth? Surely when Josephus published his account in Rome, there would have been witnesses.